So ChatGPT 5 got released last week and in true internet fashion, it didn't take long for people on Reddit to start talking shit about the new model. Now, if you made your mind up about this new model in just a few prompts without giving yourself about a week to experience it, chances are some of those Reddit users are casual fans or casual users of the sport of AI. But let's move away from that negativity because this isn't a rant video. I am here to show you guys the most ridiculous apps I've created using the new GPT-5 model. Starting off with this 3D explosion game that lets you plant TNT on buildings and then detonate them. Now I know what some of you are probably thinking. Arab guy creates a game about exploding stuff using AI. How dare you, this is for educational purposes. So here we are in the canvas and when we scroll down, we can see that it is 558 lines of code. Now what we wanna do is we wanna go up here where it says run code. And here we are, this is the actual game itself. So we're on level one, which is a small wooden house. And this is the wooden house, I guess. We have five TNTs and we have a percentage of what the destruction is. You can see here, place TNT, detonate, you can even restart the game and I can zoom out, spin around. Now watch this, when I actually zoom in, when I, do you hear that noise? That's a sound effect that I added and I've got only got five TNT, so let's detonate that, boom. Level one done, what a nice little noise at the end. Official statement, we love gravity. All right, next level, what do we got? So we've got a medium office block and we've got seven TNT. Four, five, six and one at the top, why not? Boom, there we go, everything's just going everywhere. Kind of easy, I know what you guys are thinking, but let's go to the next level. All right, we're getting a bit taller, so the TNT, we've got about nine. This is a luxury mansion. All right, so I'm pretty sure we're gonna like, most likely destroy this one. Boom, there we go, I, I love that, I really do. Look, everything's just flying everywhere and the sound effect. All right, now we're getting a bit crazier. So we, this is a level four skyscraper. And we have 11 TNT, let's just go crazy with it. And let's uh, detonate it. Alakba! Just joking guys, there we go. Okay, so 97%. All right, the last one here, we got a futuristic mega tower. We've got about 13 TNT. So let's uh, try to be, let's see, let's do this first of all and detonate. Oh, so we actually didn't pass it. See how we got 75%? I made it that you have to get at least 85% to finish this level. Let's try it again. Let me try both sides as well. Let's just see, boom. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, there we go, we passed it as well. And I don't think there is another level. No, there isn't. But I guess whilst we're here, let's see if we can make some adjustments to the game without breaking it. So let's click stop code and let's go down at the bottom here as well. So, all right, so I've just written here, can you add two more levels? All right, so it actually said, I've added two more stages after the futuristic mega tower, alien hive complex and floating sky fortress. Now, nothing changed in the code, so I don't think it's telling the truth. I'm just gonna ask it again if it, up there, if it even wrote anything in the code. I don't think it did, okay. Apparently it did. Okay, just like I thought, it, it, it's making it up. All right, so it made it up. So I'm just gonna tell it, no, you haven't added the two new levels into the code. Let's see if it listens. Most of the time it's good. Sometimes it does freak out like this, but it figures it out and then it continues on. So it's pretty good. All right, so you can see here now it's actually writing additional code as well. You're right, I hadn't actually added them fixed now. Okay. Can you try progressing past level five? Okay, let's see if it works. All right, so here we are, level six, alien hive complex. Okay, and I've had to zoom out. So I've got 15 TNT as well. Okay, let's, let's see, I don't think I'm gonna be able to pass this, but let's have a look. Oh, okay, no, I did okay. That was pretty good. I love that. All right, next level, floating sky fortress. Okay, <laughs> All right, we got 17 as well. So, okay, let's uh, send it. All right, on three, one, Two, three, boom. Oh, I can't, I didn't pass it, okay. But you know what, I'm gonna try once more just, just to give it a see if I can just do it. Okay, no, that's all right. Either way, guys, that's, that's one example of how easy it is to upgrade your existing code and update your game. It's actually been very, very easy, so loving this. 
All right, this next one is not for kids. I would say it's probably more for unhinged people. It's called Demonic Bedtime Story Generator. So this is the code. I think it's about, yeah, it's about 350. So let's run it. You've got Demonic Bedtime Story Generator. Soft bedtime vibes narrated by an overly dramatic demon. No gore, just chaos. You'll see there it says 11 Labs API key. So I'm gonna put my API key there as well, but users can put their own one. Now the voice ID is actually a voice that I designed inside of 11 Labs. And what we're doing is we're gonna call upon that voice to narrate a story idea. Let me show you what I mean. All right, so the story idea I wrote, a story about a woman who stopped speaking. I don't even know why. Now theme, I'm just gonna go random. I don't know why there's all these ones here, but to be honest, I, I didn't really uh, fine tune this one. The short story length, we're gonna make it short. Uh, now horror intensity medium and demonic level spooky. Okay, and then you can see here, you can scroll. What we're gonna do, let's stay with medium and spooky for now, and then I'll upgrade it, okay? And you can see here as well, there's different ones, creepy, overly dramatic. Okay. Let's go, anyway, let's generate it. So that you can see here, this is the story that's been generated and you can see here it's communicating with 11 labs. It should now speak very soon once it's finished generating. Once upon a moonlit bedtime, when pillows were clouds and yawns floated like bubbles, a faint chill crept in, probably from an overconfident air vent practicing spooky monologues are sleepy all right so look it like that one wasn't too scary let's ramp it up now okay so let's go extreme and let's go possess <laughs> let's go possess when the world tucked itself ah. in and the blankets made cozy mountains a oh. curious rustle oh. tiptoed through the room sounding suspiciously like dramatic violin practice our sleepy tale centers on a all right so you know what that actually worked out really well i don't even know why the hell i made this but i guess this is the whole point we're doing ridiculous apps next we have this game that i made it's called run for it 3d unhinged edition i think this one here is probably the longest line of code yeah it goes to about 840 so let's have a look at it let's click run code all right, run for a 3D unhinged edition. And you can see there, it just tells you like all of the uh, the different options as well. So let's click the start. All right, this one has sound effects as well. Um, as you can, oh, gee, see, as you can see, it's, uh, I haven't perfected this one, but there we go, we got a double jump. I think the whole purpose of this one when I was trying to make it was, let's try and make something that's just extremely hard and unhinged and, un and ridiculous and, we came with this, uh, you know what, I didn't spend too much tr time trying to fix it and make it um, better as well, but oh, but there we go. So now we can do an upgrade yeah, and that's pretty much it. Like the, uh, I'm assuming the, the levels get harder and harder, but this one was, ooh, look at that, it's, he's getting some air, right? And that's pretty much, yeah, we're pretty much, <laughs> that's pretty much that game as well. And I guess it just gets harder and harder. It was, there's a lot of bugs with that one, but Either way, at least you know you can make a 3D game like that. Now, before I show you guys this next example, I wanna show you where I got the inspiration from. So Sam Altman did this post here. So he writes, when you get access to GPT-5, try a message like use BeatBot to make a sick beat to celebrate GPT-5. So I'm just gonna press the volume. Here we go. This is pretty cool. So you can see there, there was all these uh, different songs put together and it made sort of like a bit of a beat. So I thought to myself, I want to use those, um, those, those noises, those sounds to see if we can make some form of ridiculous soundboard. So this is it here. It's only, um, yeah, 196 lines of code. So let's run it. And this is what we get. So let's play a few of these ones. There we go. And you know what? This is, it's very high quality as well. Just some of the noises. Let's just, uh, if, we if we click randomize board, what it does, it just changes all of the options again. Uh, this one I like, this window, Windows error. Now, if you click chaos mode. So that's interesting. So what I did, <laughs> when you go left, the speed increases. When you go right, the speed goes down. Um, now, I know you guys are probably thinking, like, if I click on, like, this one here, it's not really a fart noise. And it's not a... It's kind of like a dramatic chip saw. Like it kind of, it kind of is a dramatic, a dramatic chipmunk. 
Initially, I was going to do this all as just like like ridiculous noises, like farts and stuff. But maybe this is the only uh, sounds that you get with inside uh, Ch Chat GPT. All right, let's try and make it better. So I just wrote, "Can you make the user interface better and show an audio HUD when the sound effect is played?" I hope that makes sense. All right, so it actually delete <laughs> it actually deleted all of the code and it's starting again. Sometimes it does that and you get I get get scared sometimes, but it's really good with remembering the code as well. So I'm, I'm actually really enjoying this. To give you guys context, I have done this previously with other models. Like I've used Claude, I've used Cursor, and I think they work to an extent and then they sort of stop working. And I've gotten probably the most, most success in a small amount of time using this. I mean, all these ones I'm showing you now are pretty much just like, maybe sometimes they're taking me 30 minutes to make maybe even less. So I'm not putting too much effort into it, which is really good for anyone like yourself that doesn't know anything about coding. It's taking longer than expected, but I don't know. Let's just see. The, oh, it looks like it just finished. Okay. So upgraded. The UI is cleaner, glass panels, softer shadows. Um, okay. Let's uh, run it and see how it looks. Oh my God. Okay. So every time I press, I press it now, you can look at that. It's, oh my God. This is so good. I'm actually really happy about that. I love this. Okay. Like to be honest, like this one probably took me the least amount of time. I will come back to this one day. Maybe I'll connect it to 11 labs or I'll insert my own sound effects as well. So either way, this one, I really love this one. All right. Last one is the how ridiculous are you quiz? So this is about 20, 276 lines of code. Let's click run. All right. Enable sounds and kick off the chaos. Let's go. All right. So the first question is, a toddler shows you their crayon masterpiece. Say, wow, then quietly recycle it later. Critique the shading like a snobby art judge and list it as an AI modern art for $9.99. It's good. Okay, so I I'm assuming I clicked the wrong one because you can see there the uh, chaos has increased. So I think if you get the wrong answers, eventually you lose. So your, your, your objective is to do it in, in 10 tries. Swap two babies at the hospital. No one will ever know. Spin a wheel, decide which two. Do it for the Netflix docker. Oh, shit. <laughs> a stranger trips in public. No, no, we have to laugh. No, laugh so loud the pigeons flee. Come on, you guys know. You can ban one thing forever. Alarm clocks, people who clap. <laughs> Children's laughter. You monster. Let's just go with that one. Okay, All right, we're... Very Okay, the chaos mode's reached unhinged. Let's have a look. Hopefully we don't lose. You find your friend's private diary. Okay, we're reading it. Screenshot and array to the group chat. Yes. So there we go. So uh, you're, you let chaos devour your soul. So not a, bad, not, not a bad little quiz that anyone can make. So those were the examples, guys. And that was pretty much, I would say, a, a day's worth of using ChatGPT5 which to be quite honest, I'm so glad I was able to produce those examples for you guys in just a matter of one day. I could have worked on them longer and made them better and better, which I mean, that's sort of like a testament for ChatGPT. Like the more you spend time trying to make one better, you can. Like it's, I don't know, I'm just shocked at how well this works. I know people were talking crap, but don't listen to those people, guys. Go in there. Honestly, you guys, if you have, you don't know anything about code, that's all good. Go in there, have a play around, and see what you can make. I'm going to leave it there, guys, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.